Okay, so depending on what type of wheel you end up with, uh, you've got your motor casing here and you've got the power electronics going in. Um, if this is on the left, then you're going to find that as the wheel goes, say this was the left of the wheel, that's your, your left hand of your bike, you've usually got your brake disc there. If we're turning clockwise, like the kite rotors normally do, and most wind turbines turn that way, I'm not sure if there's a reason for that. Maybe it's something weird and Coriolis-y, I don't know. But, uh, right, so say we're, we're wanting to turn clockwise and generate clockwise. Most of the wheels have this, and this is a planetary gear, but with a, like a freewheeling clutch mechanism. So one way, you turn it this way, this is the, the re regen way on this motor. Normally you can't regen with one of these geared hub motors, so... You could only do it if the bicycle was going in reverse like this. You see the back part here is the rotor turning a, a bunch of magnets in the back. You've got your stator, the, the wiring's all on that, on the axle. So you see that's uh, being sped up and geared to turn that way. If I turn the wheel this way, which is the way with the kites mounted, it's going to be turning uh, clockwise from below. If you look from below, the kites are up there at the moment. If I turn it clockwise from where I am, um, you see that we're not turning that central part, so there'd be no regen. So I've got two options. I either lock off the clutching mechanism in here, or only ever buy or come across wheels that have the power going in this side. Now, I've got one to show you the difference here. I don't need my spanner on this one. Um, spinning this way, super easy. Spinning that way. Yeah, I can definitely feel the regen on it. Um, the first one that I bodged, well, it still works. I say I call it a bodge, but uh, if I hold this here, I can, um, it's the same both ways because I, I give it a really nasty piece of welding in there. I've also put this uh, thrust bearing on the front on the axle to hold the motor in place. Uh, and I think that helps a lot with how, how really rough this was. So. It's a very thin piece of case, so welding that on there, there's all this grease, it'll have to be cleaned up right enough before you can weld, because it's gonna get awfully hot and burn. But that's, you know, it's really, really thin sort of stuff to work on with a welder there. Now that I've welded the planetary gear there, so that it's shut, you can see that uh, turn here, you see the metal ring between these gears, you will see that as I turn the shaft, that's turning both ways. So it's being driven backwards now, as well as being driven forwards. So we should be able to get regen out of there, and this now fits in the case again. Okay, because this wheel is going to be used in a kite turbine, there's going to be a lot of force coming this way from the rim onto the casing, which we have to hold on the shaft. Now, these little bearings, because there's nothing going to be fixed on here, it's just the shaft that's holding this back from popping out that way. Now, it would take an awful lot of force to uh, make that happen, of course, but it comes down to this bearing here. So, what I've decided to do is make a little ring, a spacer there. I'm going to put on a massive big uh, axial thrust bearing. And that should help hold the casing back. You see it sits on the casing. Uh, has a little play there about that bottom spacer I've put on, so I've got room to fit in one of those uh, slotted washers. You see how it's got the sort of flat profile that holds onto these axles. I put a great big washer to hold the actual thrust bearing there. Now it's, it's not a sealed bearing that one, so it's you know not not the best for a wild environment. I've still got a few threads to tie onto there. Um, so they're not going to be brilliantly tied on because actually the wheel is going to be going that way. I'll have to find another way. Maybe I'll tack or lock that off somehow. Uh, drill through it, spline it, something or other. Uh, so there is a wee danger that would pop out uh, eventually. I'd, I'd have to keep an eye on that. Um, but yeah, the, the compression this can take now, the, the load that the axle is going to take now is massively increased safely and you've also you know there's the 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 rim would break off before 
this. Hopefully, the room would bend or give. See how it goes. The motor that I put the thrust bearing on top of, you'll see it doesn't run quite absolutely beautifully. There. There's a little bit of a wiggle against that central shaft. Now, the motor's, uh, well, we'll use it as a generator, is mounted on this uh, nice silver plate here. I'll see if I can get the files from that. It's Robbie from Gordon Diesel's made that out of a sheet for me. It's beautiful, fits on the shaft really well. And I can clamp that onto like any post now out in the out in a field uh, or clamp it anywhere. So I've got a wheel here. Kites can be tied on this way and going that way around. So I'm using the Vesk 6 motor controller. This thing's an absolute beast. It's amazing. So much control over your motor. Uh, I've clipped it in so that you've got uh, yellow, green, blue. I've used those yellow A, B, C, so that's the, you know, the one, two, three. You've got some hall sensors down here. It's the same colors in the motor, usually yellow, green, and blue, so I've put them on hall sensor one, two, and three. You've got a green and a, uh, sorry, a black and a red for your ground and your uh, positive. Link them in as well. It's a wee bit fiddly making these connections, JST connectors. Uh, certainly with the, the connectors I've got, I've got a bag of them here. And uh, they are tiny, so you've got to get those things crimped onto wires and onto a little plug, um, kind of like, kind of like this. I think that one's an eight pin down there this one's a four anyway once you've got that on plug in your power uh xt90 anti spark in this case uh, 36 volts coming out of an old bike battery turn it on <clears throat> link into your computer now with the vesk um i'll show you uh, i've got the control on the computer there and we'll just set it spinning straight up to 10,000 erpm there i'll put the brake on absolutely rock solid slammed it the the control is so smooth it's absolutely beautiful um with the vesk at the start you are best to go to the wizards up there so anytime you know when you first connect it on uh, go through the the connect the motor setup wizard uh you go through the input setup wizard as well but the the motor setup wizard is just phenomenal it detects all sorts of uh, motor parameters about um, you know all the hall sensors the inductance flux linkage everything you know just it's bloody brilliant it works out where everything is how you want to set it you can tweak everything to your heart's content I've inverted the motor direction here because I'm going to be working with <coughs> the kites going clockwise so as I run that that inverted motor direction was true but you see it just runs as sweet either way now, I haven't checked this out yet. If we go to real-time data analysis, start that off. Um, if I start turning the wheel, that's me giving it a wee bit of that, and you can see that, um, I'll stop there, that green line is showing us the duty cycle. If I change the ERPM down to, say, 1,000, oh, um, Right, so that wheel is going around quite slowly just now. I'll be able to assist that in turning in a wee second. And you'll see, there you are, when I do assist it, the red line, the current, goes down. So I'll let go now. That's it running smooth, all in its own power. And now I'll assist it with my finger. And so there's current powering into the battery there. Excuse me rocking backwards and forwards as I turn this wheel. It's maybe not such comfy viewing, but you see I'm regening into the battery there. And then let go. Cool, eh? So I'll get a proper controller. I'll go into the app settings. Get a Arduino, <coughs> like in this setup. I had oh, where's the Arduino? It's not there. It's now. That's a good point. Uh, I'll get an Arduino to control how this reacts to the rest of the world. Well, what I do is I, I look at the speed it's running at, and then adjust the current appropriate towards the the speed that it's currently at so the, uh, you can set the braking current this is what i was doing just now when you were seeing the the braking current on the screen you were seeing it you know recharging into the battery i was trying to push around just like that with my fingers um and so what you can do when the kite's connected you can look at the speed that it's actually going at and then decide okay based on that speed 
I probably want so much braking current. Seems to work quite well that way.